Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Game Guide review. This time we'll be taking a look at Alien Bash 2, a PD game which was released on the Amiga format cover disc 83B in April 1996. It features eight levels of top-down shoot-em-up action and basically you have crash-landed on an alien planet and it's your job to get through the levels to escape the planet and complete the game. So, so much for the Storyline, let's get into this thing and check it out. Get ready. In Alien Bash 2, we play as a mercenary whose only defense is a machine gun, and you also acquire a rocket and a grenade launcher a little later on. But for now, it's the machine gun, and by holding down the fire button, he will fire a stream of bullets uh, towards the enemy, varying degrees and angles. Basically horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, as you can see here. Every so often you will find a generator which will spit out enemies, the first three of which will leave behind a gold crystal head, which you can then trade in the shop at the end of each level to gain upgrades. So that's the first generator over with, and because those things usually spit out enemies one at a time, it's best just to stand by those things and let the enemies come to you. As easy as that. And then you can get in there and blow that thing up. There aren't many opportunities to gain score in this game. Basically it's the same enemies throughout the levels. Although as you'll see later on the enemies variants do increase. Um, but at this stage it's best just to get on through there. And this guy is extra tough behind that bush. You have to lay into him straight away and get on the diagonal there for that one. Uh, so some of these guys are harder than others and at this stage of the game is basically getting used to these generators and the attack patterns which will come one at a time but since enemies appear from off the screen you might be faced with any number of enemies to tackle all at once some of them materialize or spawn from bushes and jump out of nowhere some of them you can usually lure out there by standing around the corner guns ablaze and remember to collect those heads there for a cash bonus, which we'll certainly need later on. Uh, every one of those guys will give you 10 points, and unfortunately the points aren't visible on the screen. What you can see in the bottom corner is actually the cash accumulation you've managed to collect, and you will find cash in the form of these blue coins. Uh, you'll find some of those embedded in the scenery there that you have to shoot out. You'll also find white coins and gold coins and for each head you retrieve you will get 10 coins as well 10 credits in the bank so this is the end of the first level already all we have to do is uh, free the guy uh, which was uh, strapped to a chair that we rescued earlier on get to the pentacle there uh, which will give us the key to the exit and I'll just go back and collect that extra energy that I'll need to get through the boss and sometimes it gives you a few coins there but by pressing any key apart from the space boy which pauses the game any key will swap the weapons press it once to swap to the rocket launcher and three rockets at the enemy will get rid of that all you have to do is avoid the firepower get through just like that so at the end of each level we get to enter the shop and at this stage everything's quite expensive we can't really afford anything and we have full health so let's skip on to level two which looks practically identical graphically to the first level only this time it's much harder so what i like to do is to remove these fish which will appear and target the player head on they fire 
almost guided missiles there so you have to run out and avoid those and they disappear with a satisfying pop almost like somebody's blown up a crisp packet and again the enemies there they fire um, shuriken stars there or perhaps their chakrams like Xenia warrior princess but you have to avoid those and on this second level I like to clear my path towards uh, an energy bottle and there isn't that much energy on these levels so you really have to uh, clear your way there before we get to a very difficult section and here I'll press any key to slap my rocket and rather than milk these generators I'm going to blow those away and get rid of this again deadly uh, gun mounting position there whatever that is it looks like a, a teddy bear on a hill but those things fire deadly missiles towards the player and another pawn icon there gives us some more essential rockets and we will certainly make full use of those later on uh, but for now let's get rid of these generators and move on through the level and by now you can certainly expect a few surprises from this game uh, like this section if you lure the enemies onto the screen uh, they will materialize and destroying all those will give you a coin cache of blue coins which will give you uh, mega score you must make sure you get rid of all of those guys if you let one of those wander off the screen you won't get the coins and look at that i actually ran into the guy before i managed to kill him as i say some of these enemies are harder to knock out than others uh, definitely the ones that are standing in one place uh, when you get to face those are harder and more difficult luckily we don't need an auto fire on this game we can simply hold down the fire button and that will generate enough firepower to get us through no problem so look at this I'm definitely gonna use the rocket power to time my attack there on these smaller versions of the pigs and really judging those missiles there so I can get the perfect lock on being brave running out and getting rid of those and for all our efforts our time and trouble we will not only find a guy to rescue and on this level we'll need to rescue a couple more guys before we get to the end of the level but more importantly we'll get a treasure chest full of coins, some grenades and some health as well and we'll definitely need those. The health bar, as you see, as you see me facing yet another difficult enemy was standing there, the health bar is to the left of the uh, current uh, coin cache value there to the bottom right of the screen. The uh, health is represented by the yellow bars, I have one and a half yellow bars left it's to the right of that spinning orange uh, thing which I've no idea what that does but one and a half energy um, I'm definitely going to need to top that up and you can see uh, I've cleared my way my path to this section earlier on so after luring out these guys from the secret coin cache and it really is important to take those guys on before they lay in there with those weapons and uh, again clearing my path away there as soon as you get one another one will walk onto the screen so before i can get to the health i need to take more guys on and let's just get rid of this damn thing as well the uh, uh the guided fish missile there let's just get rid of that and now we can get to the health and one touch of these barriers will get rid of that and we can collect that for two health bars the uh, other icons you can see on the bottom of the screen the gun shows us the selected weapon as i said there are three there is uh, the rocket and the grenade launcher as well and uh, next to that you will find a box containing the current ammo of that current weapon infinite ammo on the pistol and you can upgrade that to level two and level three as well so you can have two-way fire and three-way spread going on which is excellent and as i said the auto fire is superb in this game the handling the control of the player just like the chaos engine excellent and what the player will find in this game certainly is an ever-increasing challenge and it took me quite a while to figure out some of the puzzles in this game and some of the ways to get through the various sections without uh, incurring health uh, some of these things later on uh, as you will see it's like a gauntlet avoiding missiles and things but it took me a while to figure out how to get past this enemy by pressing any key twice we can select our uh, grenade launcher and by pressing the up and down cursor keys, the arrow keys, we can then aim that thing, blow it up remotely from around the corner, and that enables us to collect the guy. But some puzzles I haven't managed to work out. In here we have some health, and we are attacked even before we get there, but 
I can't seem to get there and collect the health, so I haven't worked out that puzzle if in fact it's possible to collect that thing at all. So uh, definitely there are surprises in this game and it's certainly not a pushover and with every level comes an ever increasing challenge and some bits are really really difficult. So let's just get rid of uh, those guys. You might have seen I collected a store there which uh, lowered a number of barriers. Before I can get to the barriers I'm under attack from a guy but I can't shoot the guy because I have to avoid the fish. So it's certainly like that in this game. Frantic, hectic is definitely the word and some parts have speeded this game up but on this section I certainly haven't and the enemies are coming thick and fast you'll find energy um, tucked up in the wall there and that will only be released when we shoot that out of the landscape but we want at the moment because we have two energy bars and since that's the max we can hold at the moment let's keep those full and here's the pentacle pentangle and we don't have uh, enough prisoners rescued on this level we still have one prisoner to rescue as indicated by the one h uh, in the bottom right hand corner of that green radar symbol you can see there uh, there will be a number of h symbols on every level you might have to collect five or six of those guys chained up there to uh, be able to activate the key uh, from within the pentangle and i still want to find. In fact I've left the guy behind. Uh, you might have saw I, I left the guy chained up there without activating him. But let's just get through these generators because they uh, really pour out these things. There are three generators which appear in quick succession on this section and as soon as you've got rid of one another will appear from another one and so that means just get stuck in there and get through those and let's just get the energy as well because uh, that really is difficult and then it gives the player an easier ride towards the end of the level which is excellent and underlying to the simplicity of this game I find the uh, ascent through every level the difficulty curve is quite steep but accurately pitched so when the player gets through this part of the second level hoping to complete the thing they are rewarded by being able to do so pretty easily so as I say all I have to do is find that guy that I missed to collect the key. I don't have the key so I can't get through the exit gate so let's backtrack and find out where that guy was and here he is just in the corner there. We collected the star but didn't pick him up but let's also use this opportunity to go back and collect uh, a grenade cache that I also left behind and we will certainly need grenades increasingly over the following levels and having rescued that guy I could then run around in circles tap dance on the star and that will give him the key I need to get to the exit. So as I say I cleared the fish earlier on to make my exit pretty neat and let's press any key again, select the rocket launcher. This time the end of level boss spawns extra sections in the form of these extra spinning spike wheel things there and the player will have to knock those out individually one by one to, uh, there you go, that's two down already to take on the main hub and once again once those are clear the player can get rid of the main hub with just three missiles should they have enough to spare and complete that level for a very satisfying effect there and this time we enter the shop with 2.4 grand that gives us enough to buy this double shoot for 2000 and let's make sure that energy is full there before we go on to the level three so this game was coded by a certain Glenn Cumming who only coded one more game on the Amiga called Alien Bash which was released in 1993 which was co-produced with Stuart Law and Alien Bash was uh, another top-down action game uh, pretty reminiscent of uh, 1993's other notable PD uh, top-down action game Extreme Violence created by Simon Green but Alien Bash took that on to another level and of course this led to the uh, 1996 Alien Bash 2 sequel that you're looking at now. The graphics in this game were all crafted by Miles Jeffrey and of course this game was heavily inspired of course by the Chaos Engine and I suppose you could say the isometric 3D graphics were inspired perhaps by Gauntlet originally which came out in 1985 in the arcades but also I'm reminded of Jurassic Park for the NES, the Super NES but also the Amiga version and games like that. And as far as the music goes that was coded by uh, D-Traumer 
and Glenn Cumming himself did the sound effects and I have to say the music doesn't really stand out but the sound effects certainly do. Where have they got these from? They certainly fit the game and uh, I particularly like the uh, walking over uh, wooden floorboards there creates the uh, uh, appropriate sound. But just look at this, we are reaching our first No Way Back and it's amazing that this game actually gives us No Way Backs so if you haven't collected what you needed to from the first section then it's too late now, we're on to the next section and again no pride in destroying those generators early because if you don't they will catch us out and I'm trying to lure those fish on there, there are two fish and one over here as well and obviously uh, we'll need to knock out those before we get to the big enemies and at this stage they always seem to come in pairs so even though I'm trying to collect the, uh, the tokens here to knock out this one nice and early get those missiles the next two will come in pairs and it's as much about avoiding those missiles as anything else and it's uh, very difficult to knock out that generator because they uh, continually spawn enemies out of there and you've no sooner got through the enemies than the uh, fish uh, decides to throw another missile at us so let's get rid of that damn thing and destroy that generator the easy way by going above it and then taking on the enemies so again it's laying down the uh, groundwork to defeat the territory by advancing slowly and getting rid of the enemies in front of us uh, to give us that uh, encouragement to progress safely and it certainly isn't easy to progress safely in this game sometimes you might uh, wander uh, into an area only to get ambushed by four or five enemies together and it certainly isn't easy with these path side enemies managing to fire at us uh, spot on and of course they will only fire at our current position and usually with a side step of some description we can avoid those but I'm just clearing my path to the exit once again just to make sure that by the end of this level we have enough energy to do so I'm still struggling on the one energy bar and we haven't even reached the hardest section of this level yet which is just below us and some of those things that you can blow up actually contain worms so it's good to lay straight into those and when you have three or four targets all wandering around the screen at once, what do you do? Do you avoid the enemy? Do you shoot the enemy? Do you avoid the fish? Do you shoot the fish? Um, it's always difficult to set your priorities and if they should hit you a few times, you'll soon find your energy gets wiped down there. So uh, my usual priority is to avoid where everything's flying towards us and then once those flying objects are out of the way, it can be easier to take on the enemies but this is the hard section this is five generators all in one proximity and they will all throw our enemies towards our path and there might even be uh, five six or seven on screen at once so again it's best to knock out those generators to the right earlier on so they stop spitting enemies and that will give us a nice place to retreat to uh, collect a key and activate this gold star which we can use to activate that uh, bridge to get us to the energy and as you can see I'm on the very last bit of my energy at the moment so let's knock out these last couple of generators and make our way over there hopefully before we die uh, let's just be careful of that uh, and it really is easy to die in this game if you're not too careful. The player will start with three lives and you can't gain any more throughout the entire game. So let's top that energy up. We only have two energy bars available so they will get topped up to the max with that full uh, energy uh, vial there. And you'll only find a few energy flasks knocking around each level. And some levels uh, really do depend on those to get through, as I say, a couple of mistakes and it's, it really is vital to collect those or to reserve those, have those hanging around until you really need those and you can go and pick up that energy. So uh, again, with only three lives, it really is paramount to uh, maintain that energy as much as possible. So one more guy to find, as indicated by the one H on the bottom of the screen. So I presume he's up here somewhere, ah, here we go. And then there's a couple of easy enemies before we get to the pentangle and grab the key and as always let's just clean the level even though these worms can't hit us 
Uh, there might be bonus sections that I don't know about, but it's always a good idea to get through all the worms. Look at this. It even throws death in our face when we get to the end of the level. So it's definitely well worth preparing for that. And selecting the rocket launcher, we see we've got three uh, packets of uh, ammo for that thing. And I think each packet contains four missiles. Let's just watch. One, two, three, four. And that's one used up. So let's uh, defeat these guys. And on this level, it's certainly important to get rid of the guys that are approaching us before we tackle the machine. Because colliding with those is just as bad as colliding with the bullets. And to be honest, the bullets are the easy option in this boss. You can negotiate the bullets more than the guys. So let's avoid the bullets and the guys before returning to the thing. And because you're so busy doing that, it really is hard to get a a couple of bullets in there once every now and again but there you go with a manual shot it is possible to do that and it's uh, definitely best to save up all your rockets for the end of level bosses and don't bother wasting them in the game so at this point let's just buy another energy bar which puts us up to three and a bit more energy there to top that up and start level four which is a deceptively easy level after all that hardship we've just gone through and as I said the difficulty curve on this game is absolutely perfect just when the player wants to get further the game will allow that and press any key twice to select our grenade uh, maneuvering that thing up with the arrow keys there to get rid of those bombs and look at this the uh, trap there can spit so many of those worms out it's really hard to knock those out and I fully expected fire to pour out of that uh, jar there and blow me up, but it didn't. So that's yet another one of those things where the game takes it easy on the player at this stage. And the aim of this level, as you can see, is to collect all those guys on the bottom of the screen. There are, it looks like, six H's there. And the radar will glow a lighter green when one of those guys is in our vicinity. So let's collect one of those, crash straight through the enemy. That wasn't a good idea. And this is a hard section as well. We must get rid of this small generator first of all. Flick the switch to open the barrier. And we must actually blow up the chest to reveal the key before the bullets will pass through that. And allow us to blow up that yellow teddy bear meaty on the other side. Uh, those accurate teddy bear shots really do need knocking out there. And then let's speed on to the next section. Uh, we've gained a key, and we will gain a key in every one of these sections. But look at this, the enemies spawn uh, in a clockwise position from 12 o'clock, and they will go around the clock twice, so you will have to knock those out, not only avoiding their firepower, but avoiding each other as well. And at this stage, uh, you count yourself lucky if you collect those heads left behind by those guys, just get through that in one piece, and the rest of the level is much easier after that so uh, again collect the key another hard boss there because he's standing around let's just get rid of him so uh, you might expect the level to get hard after this but it doesn't the next few sections are quite easy so just get through that gate collect the guy get the key collect the upgrades and the ammo and then we're on to the next section pretty easy stuff so the game really does encourage the player to progress and never leaves the player highly frustrated and having to go back so uh, it would be really easy to knock this uh, section out but I'm just going to get a few more coins you can see I'm only up to 375 there at least I have the double shoot upgrade and uh, just collect this guy and get rid of the last few enemies on this section and certainly the inclusion of grenade domes on this level gives the player an extra something to think about and not least when we reach this, this is more or less grenade dome alley. We have to uh, aim those things perfectly and it isn't always easy to get the uh, player in a diagonal to uh, get a perfect lock on those things, uh, particularly in the heat of battle. And uh, at this stage the game is just getting the player used to these things, but obviously later on uh, they will pose much more of a threat. And another mysterious new enemy on these levels is the spider and the spider will throw homing spiders at us. Yes, it will launch spiders which will track us across the screen and follow us down alleyways. So we must not only destroy those homing spiders but destroy the mother spider as well. 
and uh, which isn't usually easy because they like to hide and so the game provides us with extra enemies there just to spice up the playing experience and although the levels look pretty much identical certainly the uh, variety of gameplay does change uh, so yet again uh, for the third time you will see me clearing the exit clearing the way all the way there so by the time I get to the end of this level I can simply get through the exit and uh, get through to the bonus section next that's pentangle and the exit gates just up there so clear these bosses in the center of this maze you might notice uh, some coins as well we can't actually collect those coins at the moment those require the activation of a star a yellow star later on and that requires us to solve a puzzle uh, which again wasn't easy for me to work out the puzzle lies in this section and to begin with you have to ignore the gold star to the south there otherwise the puzzle will be triggered and you'll be inundated with all these guys before you get a chance to trigger that but as soon as you approach you'll hear a, a slidey noise and that will indicate the appearance of these guys and by blowing those up with the grenade you can then access the star and then access all that cash in the center of the level but that's not before getting your ass kicked by these spawning enemies and these grenade lobbing things that spawn fire and again I can't get the diagonal on that thing from where I am so I'm gonna have to wade in and hopefully come out of there unscathed and then we can collect the cash and that will only give us maybe a thousand extra but at this stage this game is quite measly on its cash reserves so even a thousand credits will be highly appreciated once we get to the shop once again we're on our last reserves of energy so uh, energy comes at a premium you can't really collect much of it so buying extra energy in the shop sometimes is the only alternative and to do that we have to get there so clear out a few of these generators and we're down to the last guy to find and here he is uh, collect the key and nothing in there what a shame and thanks mister thanks for that and I'm also going to run all the way back and collect a, a cache of um, grenades there which also comes in handy saves us buying extra ones in the shop and that means I can collect the key and get through the door to the exit so what do we find in here then the screen scrolls aha on this section we find the first uh, obstacle while well, these uh, automatic teddy bear uh, positions so let's knock them out with a couple of rockets and you might see I'm uh, already running out of rockets there so I've had to switch to the grenades and you can see the uh, items will flash when you hit those rotating uh, chain enemies there and they aren't flashing which gives away the fact that these grenades haven't made an impact on those so it's back to the chain gun and it gets harder with these um, grenades being fired in the center of the screen as well uh, it's the normal pattern to avoid the fireballs coming down from the boss but when you see those grenades erupting from the very center uh, there uh, it's time to move left and right and if the grenades are just appearing on the left and the right then you can just ignore those because their fire won't reach us uh, so let's avoid the center and hopefully knock out those rotating arms and get the central thing uh, again it's not really difficult uh, once you get to know the firepower it's just a case of avoiding what you have to get avoid and then finding your way all the way back to the center giving it a few more pot shots and then avoiding some more so that's not really difficult it's just basically time consuming and again once you knock out those century guards as well with a few rockets that becomes much easier so 1400 can i afford anything no i can't certainly afford 4000 for a triple power up so i'm going to spend most of that cash just uh topping up our energy a few times just to give us the slightest fighting chance and i'll also buy uh some rockets as well just to save us picking those up and definitely required on the boss so let's see if we can get there this is level five and we actually see a change in scenery on this level we get to see an effect a snow effect and later on we will certainly get to see snow on the uh, level uh, making life extremely difficult 
But at this stage, uh, let's get through the normal respawning enemies. And again, the fish, just to uh, try and uh, move forward. And we are pinned down at the moment. It's certainly possible to be pinned down in this game by too many enemies respawning, all of which firing missiles in our general direction and pushing us all the way back there. But uh, we really need to get in and destroy those generators, even if it means taking a few hits like that uh, to progress. Otherwise, we'll be pinned down forever, basically. So nothing down there. Let's move on and respawn enemies. And again, we see the teddy bear towers there determined to push us all the way back down the level. And because this guy respawns all the way up there, we can't take on the tower until we destroy the guy. Uh, so let's get rid of him and give it a few more pot shots. Let's save all our missiles for the end. But just as we think we're past that, we get a respawning enemy and another dodgy tower to knock out. It's a really good job I knew that was there, otherwise I would have died. And then it starts snowing, gives us another uh, large portion of enemies and more towers to knock out. So at this stage you can't tell what uh, is a fireball, what is snow, what is an enemy. Uh, and look at this, really is difficult to discern things at this moment. You might be avoiding snow and all these uh, towers determined to see the back of us. Uh, it's important to get rid of those because they really will uh, drop our energy down. We're down to one already from three that we bought at the beginning. So it's uh, an attack, attack, attack. And you don't get time to stop if you don't uh, avoid those things. So yet again, I'm going to destroy that uh, generator nice and early because I know for a fact that there are five more generators spawning enemies towards us on this particular section. And there will also be three respawning uh, enemies uh, at certain points. So it's hard enough to wade through these things. And that's why going for the generators is the only possible way to move forward. Let's take out two at once. That's a good tactic. And more respawning enemies, more respawning generators. So uh, you might have noticed I walked straight past the energy upgrade on the appearing on this level, uh, this section of the level. So what I'm going to do, clear my path until I'm almost empty, get rid of the last respawning enemies, and run all the way back up there, collect the full health to put us up to three, and that's certainly a tip to remember, particularly because as soon as you enter the next part, you'll find three enemies materialised together, which wipes out a whole energy bar in one go, and you also find not only endlessly respawning generators at this point and things which endlessly fire in our direction but we'll find uh, merciless grenade throwing domes as well so uh, again the player doesn't really know what to take on uh, and with this snow effect uh, I really do appreciate this snow effect it has to be said it, it really is smooth and really does uh, even though it makes difficult uh, the gameplay uh, that's intentional of course, so uh, it just means it's one more reason to knock out these fish because trying to see these uh, blobs of water they throw out is particularly difficult. And look at this, we collected an extra key earlier on in the previous level which didn't go anywhere because it was a spare. And on this level we find a, a door we can't even get through because we don't have any keys. So no idea how to get a key for that door and the key from the previous one didn't carry through so there may yet be a few puzzles i haven't quite solved in this game uh, maybe somebody will write in and let me know how to get past that maybe glenn coming himself will write in and tell us how to get past some of these really difficult bits where you are pinned down with grenade fire fish fire rapid fire and literally fire all at the same time and you just can't whip out your grenade launch to get that thing on a diagonal but uh, that's how you have to progress in this game and the programming is certainly tight in this game uh, but there are certainly no bugs in the game or anything that could break down and speaking of Glenn Cumming and speaking of bugs I read recently that the original discs containing the Alien Bash games containing the actual code were recently recovered
from his uh, abode, only to find that the discs were corrupt. So what Glenn had to do was get in touch with uh, Prowler on the EAB forum and having spent many months reconstructing the data from the virus discs, Prowler is on the verge of handing those discs back as of April 2012 and it might have taken that guy over a year, perhaps two years, to be able to uh, resurface those discs but perhaps maybe in the distance of time Glenn will be able to resurrect those and release updates uh, like uh, the Alien Fish Finger series uh, received updates last year so uh, certainly look forward to those and uh, exploring more of these difficult difficult games and it doesn't become more difficult than uh, a line of fish on this section you actually find uh, eight fish four of which are in the first section which are nearly easy to knock out nearly but not quite easy and then the other four fish or hell, they uh, fire so many missiles in our direction, we spend all our time running back to avoid those, getting hit by some, and running back, and even when we clear the first one, we fire waves of these things, so Fish Alley, I call this, uh, uh, kind of a section from hell, just as, as soon as you get to the end point, you get attacked by all these guys as well, so... Uh, running away definitely helps in some, some of these levels and even running away doesn't even help on some of these levels and it doesn't uh, give the player any time to pause for breath this game will uh, instigate enemies at every opportunity and they will wander on the screen there repeatedly so here we are fighting our way up the central section of level 5 and well, that's uh, an easy section we can just get rid of this boss and it actually gives us the grenades there to take out this enemy so we'll be brave, nip in there get rid of it and carry on and you can run and gun as well if you're pressing the keyboard and pressing the, fi the fire button as well uh, which is another neat aspect of this game and of course you will need the running and gunning aspect uh, this footage has not been speeded up, this particular footage just to show you the action does come furiously and then let's speed up a bit but uh, just when you think it's all over and I'm down to the final bar of energy the game actually gives the uh, player a break again and when you uh, uh, emerge from that break section it will make the uh, life difficult again with all these uh, grenade throwers and the emergence of yet another enemy to avoid the landmine which upon blowing up will fire a hail of blitz in all the directions you can imagine and if you're standing by those certainly you don't want to be standing by landmines and look at this you have to tackle that thing head on and that's wiped my energy down to virtually zero and clinging on to two lives there uh, it's not really looking good for the end of the game but uh, backing through there uh, it's always possible to get just that a bit further on every play and look at this I'm on virtually zero a spit one more spit from those guys and I'm off so one criticism of this game it's certainly not easy on the, uh, the casual player it's certainly not friendly with those power-ups the money aspect it takes you a long time to gain power-ups in the shop and I've certainly not been able to upgrade to level 3 firepower even so it's certainly not kind in that respect either the enemies are hard the puzzles are often difficult so the difficulty curve ramps up there, look at that, straight into a trap uh, of, of enemies and then as soon as you get through those it gets back to the easy sections again so the difficulty curve is mysterious and it certainly would have been easier um, to find better power-ups and more money and that kind of thing and certainly more health, if only the player had more health to pick up then fantastic but they don't so uh, with full health now going into the final boss uh, well the boss on this level 5 so I'd certainly say level 5 is a hard level and even level 6 gives the player a break after level 5 so if you can get through to level 5 uh, level 2, level 3 are easy so you should be able to gain progress and again it's one of these end of level bosses where you have to get rid of the attacking animals there and avoid the firepower at the same time before you reel off a few pot shots at the boss 
and it's difficult until you wipe out the uh, spinning chains that revolve around that thing and then you can basically uh, avoid the enemies. Look at this, I'm down to my last breath so you really are uh, running around. It's difficult to get through those bosses but uh, none too difficult from the previous boss, that one and the next one, believe it or not, is even easier uh, should we get that far. So let's get all the energy we can cram in there and a few more missiles and check out level 6. And level 6 is the last level I will show you in this playthrough guide uh, basically because this is as far as I've ever got I've managed to get through to the level 6 boss and there are 8 levels, don't forget, in this game and level 6 although is quite long and uh, by this time the player will be keen to uh, move through the level slowly, knock out those bosses when they appear uh, I have to say the uh, level of difficulty in this game uh, once uh, the player reaches level 6 starts off fairly easy the only uh, thing to avoid is the emergence of yet another brand new trap and that's the emergence of these wasps or bees which uh, emerge out of uh, wasp hives and you can see there there's a wasp hive I can't even hit it from the side of that bridge so those things when they appear will fly uh, in a random direction towards the player sometimes straight into the player sometimes they will fly all the way around so you never uh, can quite tell where those wasps are gonna uh, go to so you have to knock those out early and concentrate on those before taking out the hive and again collision detection uh, at a premium there but I managed to knock that thing out so yet again a brand new enemy and so even though I have to uh, downgrade this game on repetitive level uh, scenery and limited colour scheme of course uh, the, the game at least does give you a variety of enemies and uh, maybe a new enemy on every level and it, uh, even though the gameplay might seem repetitive um, deceptively easy at the start it has to be said uh, I find this game harder than the Chaos Engine in so many ways uh, at least with the Chaos Engine they had the firepower to mow down the enemies they had two players on screen to work together the enemy patterns were fairly easy to work out and in the Chaos Engine the enemies certainly didn't spawn right next to the player and wipe their energy out just like that so uh, this game even though I'm uh, accustomed to Amiga games and platform games and shoot em ups in general I find this definitely difficult and again that's uh, without auto fire because the game at least comes with adequate auto fire to dispose of the enemies and unlike Apedia which we reviewed uh, recently the enemies are quick to dispose of and uh, that's yet again a good thing if the game was very very hard on the player having to knock out these enemies would be a real chore with these shuriken stars flying around the place but uh, let's just speed on through now past these sections of level 6 before it uh, takes a turn for the worst yet again and collect that energy which is actually a trap you need to get rid of that thing before you collect the energy and everything is a trap in this game even the simplest things take time to manage your way through and uh, that's the end virtually of the easy section when you collect this blue star and move on to the next section it then becomes harder again so let's get the coin and check it out uh, look at that four respawning enemies ambush me just like that and let's knock out that thing so we're entering one of the most difficult sections of level six and I can only presume level 7 and level 8 get even harder than this but uh, on the other side of this generator uh, the uh, play area opens out and that uh, reveals a uh, free play zone where everything it seems fires missiles at us and it's difficult to move forward so let's move on and check that out down to our last life and our last bit of energy there so won't be long now but at least I get to show you these levels or at least as far as I've got with these levels and uh, as I say I have managed to get to the level 6 boss but we won't be getting that far unfortunately in this game uh, you'll just be able to see me uh, in this open section here uh, more or less getting my ass kicked by all these guys 
and having that last energy wiped and um, being very cautious at the moment trying to conserve the extra energy but uh, at this stage every knock is a severity seems we're down to virtually zero and look at this what an ambush that was two guys and look at this things exploding everywhere so I have respect for this game uh, it uh, certainly is polished quality uh, particularly for a PD game and was well worth buying that copy of the League format in April 1996 to pick this up and as I say I can only look forward to uh, congratulating the author on this game and perhaps uh, looking forward to upgrades or even sequels in the future but uh, my doom on this playthrough uh, revolves around the uh, these teddy bear things, I've no idea what they are, uh, that requires us to use rockets. It's difficult enough to wade in there and avoid the firepower and it's also difficult to get in there and fire the rocket. So uh, I shall take this opportunity to say thanks everybody yet again for viewing this playthrough guide and we're playing this currently on the uh, Lemon versus EAB uh, competition and that's not a high score unfortunately but we're in the last week of that competition so if you haven't joined already come along and try it and yet again thanks for viewing this playthrough guide see you soon